Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers and, you know, some blab. So I don't know how many of you know this, but you have a few autistics out in the world here who we, we suffer from insomnia. And we get these nights where, like, no matter what we do, even if we, like, take a Tylenol PM, there's no knocking us out. Well, last night was that night for me. So I'm not at 100%. So send send all the positive vibes, all right? I'm exhausted. All right. So in the description box, folks, you're going to see the link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It is written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, where they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's quote-unquote behavior modification program. Matter of fact, JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they do not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused to comply, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share on all your social media. You will also see linked in there no Classics public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as their GoFundMe. Hold on, folks. We are crowdfunding, folks, just in case the JRC has the balls to see through with their threat. Get back in there, church. No, bad girl. Sorry about that interruption. (sighs) All right, back to where I was before the tiny cat decided that she wanted to try and kill Brahma. We also have linked in there the Agape Boarding School situation links. Agape Boarding School is a Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has and pending over 21 lawsuits leveled against it that are leveling substantiated claims of sexual abuse, physical abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, starvation, and yes, child trafficking. Okay, read all the articles so far. Please do, please do. We've had so far one former staff arrested by the FBI. Another, a former doctor, is up on several substantiated claims of sodomy and sexual abuse of the students on the campus. And he's still there. That's right. You heard me. He's still there. So please read those articles, share on all your social media, especially right now, because we've got the elections coming up, and these bastards who have sat there and done nothing while these people get a, continue to get abused, need out the fuck door, okay? We also have linked to change.org, shut agape boarding school down petition, please sign and share on all your social media. We also got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Koya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of peoples with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you do got young children present, please use your headphones, all right? Now, this channel is marked. Not for kids, for reason, folks. We use profanity on this channel and we talk about dark subjects. If your child is watching and they are 16 or younger, parental supervision is very obviously advised, all right? All right, it is 5.06 a.m. in the morning. I'm not even remotely awake yet, so folks, if I snubble over my words, apologies in advance, all right? Okay, so let's go to the second part of this insanity that we didn't go over yesterday. And hear more of these false equivalencies and just plain insanity. 
Strengthening alternative appropriate behaviors that generate the same accelerating consequences that the inappropriate behavior generates. Wait, what? Is that a typo? Or did I read that right? Let's read that again. Strengthening alternative appropriate behaviors that generate the same accelerating consequences that the inappropriate behavior generates. Are you, are you admitting that even when you get the behaviors you want, you still accelerate the consequences and punishment anyways? See, I told you folks, I told you, they don't actually give a shit. They're not rewarding good behavior. They punish you if you do, and they punish you if you don't. How does this make sense as a treatment program, folks? It doesn't even make sense based on the model that they're trying to defend. The stick and carrot routine? How is it even a stick and carrot routine if there's no fucking carrot? For example, we might try to teach the student other ways to generate the same function of the behavior. Again, here we go. Here we go again, folks. This is where they say, but we know why you have the behaviors. You want attention and you want a positive outlook from my peers. Okay, let me say it again, Karen, for the idiots in the fucking back. If I'm trying to get positive reinforcement from my fucking peers, the last thing I'm going to do is give in to all my fucking autistic little behaviors, okay? I know those behaviors paint a target at my fucking back. It shouldn't, but I'm very fucking aware of the neurotypical world we all live in, and I know how people like me are viewed. I know, Karen. I know already that my peers are not going to reinforce that behavior and say, yeah, yeah, no, it's going to paint a target on my back for bullying for the rest of my goddamn existence. And how do I know this? Because my ass went to fucking public school. Okay? Everything that was different about me made me a fucking target. Remember, folks, I had in it my entire class when the teacher was not in the room jeering me so loud that a teacher in their class could hear it all the way down the goddamn hallway. And after I'd already thrown a desk and started walking out, that teacher went up and caught me and brought me into their room and chewed out my teacher. There was no way in hell, no way in hell, that I'm going to willfully do those behaviors in a situation that I know it's going to be a big fucking red target on my back, okay? When I was in school, I just wanted to be left the hell alone to read in silence. So I wanted. I wasn't trying to get anyone's attention, good or bad. When I threw that desk, it wasn't to get attention, Karen. I threw that desk out of complete utter fucking frustration. It is a meltdown. Meltdowns don't function on logic or neurotypical motivations. It's a snap. You ever snapped before? Do you have any motivations behind when you snap? No, that's fucking ridiculous. You snap because you snap. You can't take it no more. You're not trying to functionally get anything out of it. It's just a consequence of too much shit being piled on. This is true for neurotypicals and autistics. Just the things that make us snap and to the extent in how we snap and how much control we have is extremely different. But the general basis is the same. 
The general basis is snapping when you are overwhelmed and you just can't take no more. There is no logic or reasoning behind it. It just simply is. But ABA and ARC, for some reason, thinks that we're trying to manipulate people and get attention. No, Karen. No. You see, again, you are trying to attribute neurotypical toddler characteristics to autistics. We are not the same as you. And even though there's similarities, we know that when a toddler throws a temper tantrum, they're trying to get something that they want. A meltdown is not a temper tantrum. Can I say that again for the dumbasses in the back who don't seem to be able to get it through their thick, goddamn, neurotypical, holier-than-thou, self-righteous fucking heads? Meltdowns and temper tantrums are not the goddamn same thing, even if they look similar. They're not. A melting down child has more in common with an adult neurotypical who snaps than a toddler throwing a temper tantrum because he didn't get his lollipop. We don't want anything out of it. Manipulation? Or trying to get something out of it is the farthest fucking thing from my mind when I'm in one. Okay? A meltdown is when the brain literally stops working. You hear me? Good. I'm glad we established that because they seem, but we know your motivation. So if you give appropriate behaviors, we'll give you attention. What in the God's name makes you think I want your goddamn attention? Or that of my peers. I've never understood that neurotypical reasoning. But if you do this, you get positive attention. Did you ever think I don't want attention, positive or negative? Ever think that maybe I just craved for you people to leave me the fuck alone? And that, in fact, the more attention you give me, the more likely I'm going to melt down? We don't like an intense amount of pressure, folks. We don't like people honing their focus in on us to that intensity. We just don't. I mean, yes, we enjoy other people's company. We like hanging out with people. Of course we do. Loneliness in autism is a thing. It very much is a thing. I've suffered from it myself for the majority of my adult life. But a meltdown or the self-injurious behavior or aggression that they actually go out of their way to trigger that comes out, we're not trying to change it. The JRC triggers those behaviors so that we'll throw a fit or go into autistic meltdown. So, and then they'll tell you, see, if you don't have a meltdown, you'll get what you want. You never do. You never do, by the way. But they don't seem to understand that literally the unfairness of a situation is going to be the straw that broke the camel's back, not the ultimate trigger. Because their concept of what our motivations are is bogus. It's bullshit. It's bullshit and it's bad for you. Okay? Meltdowns, the self injurious behavior, the lashing out. There is no logical motivation behind it. We just snap. You've snapped before in your lives. I'm sure you have. Everybody does. Are you trying to get something out of it? Didn't think so. I know I keep harping on this, but it drives me insane.
You all don't even know exactly what you're trying to program out of us because you don't understand us because they never shut up long enough to let us fucking talk. Maybe if y'all would let us talk and tell you what's going on, you might be able to adjust your treatment plans accordingly. That's why I prefer person-centered planning instead of ABA bullshit, because I get to talk. They get to listen. And then we work together and brainstorm accordingly. Then I know. We can't have that logic now, can we? Alright folks, I'm getting ready to lose my voice and I'm going to need a cough drop here in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and close out on that thought. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.